Hey friends and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to look at functions within Python. Functions are of a great benefit when we're programming. They allow us to break down our program into more manageable and bite-sized pieces of code. And this keeps our program organized and helps us when we come back to revisit that code or we want to reuse certain pieces of code multiple times. So in today's tutorial, we're going to see how we can take a petrophysical equation such as clay volume and turn that into a function that we can then use to do our calculation multiple times. Before we get on to the tutorial, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that has subscribed to this channel. Last week we reached 1000 subscribers and that is a value that I didn't think that I would achieve until well into my YouTube journey. But it's only been four months since I started this channel and seeing that growth has been phenomenal. So I just want to say a big thank you to everyone and it is very much appreciated and I hope I can keep up the content for you all. So let's have a closer look at what a Python function is. And we can see here we've got an example of a function that is going to take a number and square it. So let's just start from the beginning. First we have the DEF or the define keyword and this is the initial part of defining our function. So then we have the name of our function followed by brackets or parentheses and within those parentheses we can then pass in arguments or parameters to our function. So we can take in one value and pass it into our function when we call it and then we get another value back or multiple values. So in this instance, I'm using a value of x and what we're going to do is feed that into the function. So then we end that line with a colon and then we move on to the next part. And this is an important part when you're working with code is the documentation or doc strings. It is always important to include these within your code, especially as your code starts to grow larger and larger as this helps not only you, but other people to come back to the code and read and understand what that function is doing. Also, when you use doc strings properly, you can then get the information when you're working within Jupyter Notebook or VS Code as a tooltip, and you can see what the function requires. So we need to specify three double quotes at the top, and then followed by another three double quotes. And then within that, we then put in our doc string. So this is a, just a very simple doc string where we're just describing what this function is, is doing, where it is just taking a number and returning the square of that number. So following the doc string, we can then add in our statements for this particular function. So here I have y is equal to x to the power of two. So we're squaring x. So finally, we have a line with the return keyword. Now this is optional. We, we can also just use a function to generate a plot or some sort of table. But most of the time we actually want to return a value from, from our function. In this case, we're returning y that has been calculated on the line previously. And this allows us to assign a variable to the function and then whatever the function returns will be assigned to that variable. So once our function has been created, we can then call upon our function by its name. And then within the parentheses, we can then pass in any of the arguments that are required. So in this case, we need to pass in a value for x. So here in this example, I've passed in the value of two. So when we run that function, we get back the number four, which is two squared. So now that we've covered the basics of a Python function, let's hop over to our Jupyter Notebook and see how we can start creating some functions from our clay volume equation. So for this particular notebook, we don't need to call in any libraries. And the purpose of this tutorial is to illustrate the use of functions for making modular and reusable code. So if we take a clay volume or a shale volume equation, which is just the same equation with just different endpoints as an example here. So what we can do is set some parameters. We'll set gr clean as our low value. And we'll set that to 10 and then gr max, which we will set to 100 and then our gr value, which is our value from the log, is equal to 50. So now we've got our parameters there, we can then create our equation, which is going to be igr is equal to gr value minus gr clean, and then divide that by gr max minus gr clean. And then we can call upon that igr value, and then we get back a value of 0 0.44. So within Jupyter Notebooks, this is very simple to just modify. We can simply change that to 60 and then we get a value back. We can change that to 70 and we can also get a different value back. But what happens if we were in something like VS Code where we needed to have a specific function that we can call upon multiple times or within Jupyter Notebooks, we can, we can have a function within a cell, again, that we can call upon multiple times without having to rewrite all this out with different parameters. 
And we can do that just simply by creating a Python function. And to start with, we call upon DEF, which stands for define. And then we pass in what the name of our function is. And in this case, we're calling this IGR. And then we're going to pass in our variables. So we're going to pass in a value for GR clean, and then GR max, and then GR value for our log value. And then what we're going to do is take this equation here, and we're just going to return that. So now we've got our equation, we can now call upon that function, IGR, and then we can pass in the values of 10 and 170. And we can do the same again, call upon IGR, and then pass in a value of 20, 150, and a value of 30. And we get a value back for that of 0 0.07. So now we can reuse this function multiple times, but we can also expand it. So with this equation, where we're returning the GR value minus the GR clean, and then dividing that by the GR max by the GR clean. And this equation is used when we're calculating the shale volume or when calculating a clay volume. And we just have different values for the parameters GR max and GR clean. So within this video, we're not going to get into the debate of shale volume versus clay volume, as that could be an entire video on its own. But for the purposes of this, if we wanted to have the ability to choose whether we want this as a clay volume or shale volume, we could add in a parameter called CSR, which is our clay shale ratio. And we can set that to default to one. So that if we run this equation without a CSR of ratio, then we're just going to get back whatever we are trying to obtain. So if we're trying to obtain a clay volume, then we would put in a clay maximum value here or a shale max parameter. So now that we've got our CSR value here, we then need to multiply this by CSR. And we just put the brackets around the, the whole thing. And then run that. And we can see that we still get the same value back, but if we pass in a value for CSR is equal to 0 0.5, then we should half that value that we had, which is down to 0 0.33. And this is just a useful way that we can use functions. We can add extra parameters and make them optional, and then we can also return the values. So we're going to create a new function for IGR, and then we're going to be passing in the GR clean value, the GR max value, the GR value, and the CSR is equal to 1. But what we're going to do is also pass in a new argument, and we're going to set that to method, and we'll set that equal to linear. With the IGR or with the clay volume shale volume, we do have multiple methods that can account for different ages of rocks and the different variations in uh, the gamma ray values, so we can set up our function to account for that. And here we've got our method, which is equal to linear, and that is going to be the default one. And that is going to be the same equation that we have up here. So if we put in a few conditional statements, so if method is equal to linear, and then what the function is going to do is it's going to return the equation that we have here. So we can take this equation that we have up here, and then we can call upon, or then we can create a new variable called IGR, and then pass it here. So we're going to be using IGR within the other equations, and we can just simply return IGR. If we pass in a different method, which is going to be Larionov uh, Young, then we're going to take that IGR value and put it into another equation. And in this case, we're going to be multiplying 0 0.083 by uh, what's in the brackets here. So we'll pass in two to the power of, and then another bracket, 3.71 times that IGR value, and then we're going to subtract one from that. So that will give us our value for Larian of Young. So I've taken the, the CSR method out as we're not going to be using it within this particular set of equations, and we're just going to assume that the values that are being passed in here are relevant to either a shale volume or a clay volume. So we can call upon this method once we've run it by just calling upon IGR, and then we can pass in values for a clean, which we'll set to 10, then 100 for our maximum value, and then 70 for our, our actual log value. So when we run that, we get back 0 0.66, which is what we had above here. But we can now pass in a different argument, which is method, and we will set this to Larionov. 
and then pass in young. So we can run that and we can see that we've now got the new value of 0 0.377. But we're not finished there. What happens if we pass in some random text string here? We can then add else to the end of our statement here and we can say print you did not select a correct method. Please use linear or, or use Larianov young. So now when we run that, we then get back the printed statement saying that we didn't select the correct method and then we need to use linear or Larianov young. And there we have it, we have seen how to create functions using Python. They're very simple to create, but they're very powerful and can be used multiple times throughout your program. And they allow us to break down the code into more manageable and bite-sized chunks. So if you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more content from this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button and ding that bell. So until next time, thanks for watching and bye for now.